Welcome, Welcome to, to another video. video! Guys, today we're gonna be sharing about 13 tips and tricks to help you have a great time at Touch of Disney. Basically, I made some mistakes there and you guys are gonna be able to learn from my mistakes. So if you're excited, give it a thumbs up. Let's subscribe now and let's get into the video. Do you want to win some cool Disney stuff like this? All you have to do is look for a hidden Mickey like this in today's video and comment the timestamp below, like the video and subscribe, and of course, turn on post notifications. Winners will be picked every single Wednesday. Good luck. Shout out to you guys for sending us some cool stuff to our P.O. Box. It is March 23rd and uh, we just got home maybe about 20 minutes ago we went to touch of disney and we had an amazing time and today i want to give you guys some tips before we jump into today's video we got to pick a winner for some disney stuff so the winner is v let's just go ahead and check to make sure that she commented the right timestamp. and drum roll there it is she definitely did it so congrats to you be sure to comment your email in the comments below and uh, we'll get that sent out to you you got 48 hours to respond Cannot wait to send you some stuff. Now let's get right into the video. So number one is get there early and do not park at the Mickey and Friends structure if you wanna get in the park even before the 12 p.m. Uh, start time. So what we did is we parked at a hotel. The best place to park in my opinion is probably gonna be Best Western which is directly across the street from the harbor entrance. You can literally park across the street and you're there. Um, the cast members will line you up as you can see right here and they'll let you in uh, a little bit before and then you queue up where the buses used to pick you up and then they'll let you in. We were the 10th group in line and we were one of the first ones in the park and what that does for you guys is once you're in, um, we got in at about 11.30, 30 minutes before the park actually opened and we were able to mobile order things early and that was a huge, huge save. I forgot to mention, you can also park at Anaheim Hotel. It's only $10 as opposed to the 15. And speaking of foods, one of my best suggestions for you guys is tip number two, which is prioritize your top five foods. Figure out, you know, before you actually go there, what are the five things that you guys want to eat? And then figure out what is the most popular of those items and get those items first. The first thing we did when we got there is we went right to Grizzly River area and we went to Smokehouse Jumper and ordered the Monte Cristo and we got it before anybody else ordered it. So we literally got it like right at 12, which was awesome. And uh, that helped as well as the wings. We got the wings because the lines for that, if you've seen other people's videos, is just incredibly long and not, I wouldn't say not worth the way because they were amazing as you'll see in an upcoming video. But um, it's just, nothing is worth sitting in line and just waiting you know what i mean especially when you're on a time crunch tip number three is either print out your touch of disney tickets or add them to the app personally save paper and time and just add them to the app because what's going to happen is when you buy the touch of disney tickets they're going to send you a pdf file you're going to need to download that to your phone and then scan it onto the app and it'll just make getting in the park easier for you it's less time because the cast members will say oh well you need to add these because those tickets don't even really belong to you until you add them to the app or you print them out and it has your name on there because you have to add your name for each ticket so definitely do that because cast members have to scan like 50 things in order for you to get in the park it takes a long time so for your mental health and the people behind you just speed it up and do that before you even get there tip number four is do not wait to use your gift card you get a 25 dollars gift card when you enter the cast member that scans your ticket um, will hand you a ticket for re-entry if you leave as well as your 25 dollars gift card guys we made the mistake of not using it i thought you know what we have um, reservations for lamplight lounge let's just wait and use it there and that was the biggest mistake ever because we didn't get into Lamplight Lounge a little later, until a little later than we thought. And um, we ha had like $30 left over and we just ended up using it to tip the lady. But I mean, we could have used that to buy a lot of food. So, so honestly guys, just get rid of that $25 gift card as soon as you can. And uh, that way, you know it's gone because for most of us, we're only going there one time. If you are going back for a second day or a third day, you can use whatever's left over on another day. It doesn't expire that day, but you can't use it in downtown Disney or anything. So again, just get rid of it right away because again, we left $30 on the table, which it went to a lady who was really nice, which was cool, but we could have used that to buy more food. So tip number five, if you are going there by yourself or with like 
I don't know, your girlfriend, your wife, or another friend. Um, COVID, <laughs> one of the big things that I didn't realize when I went to Disney World and now I experienced it here is a lot of times we ask people, hey, can you take a picture of us? We'll take a picture of you. And you know, now it's kind of awkward to do that. I did take a picture for one guy and um, you know, it wasn't a big deal. I don't mind taking pictures for people. I'm just constantly sanitizing my hands and whatnot. Um, but it's, it's awkward now. So I would recommend taking like a little tripod holder for your phone. Maybe you can set it on a trash can or on something, you know, maybe you have a tripod that has like a flexible, you can bend it and stuff and you can like stick it on a tree or something. But guys, it's harder to take pictures now. Um, the good thing is, is built into the touch of Disney price is the Disney photo pass option. So there's a ton of photographers everywhere that can hook you up. But honestly, their pictures they take with a super high um, f-stop, so the pictures are not like that really nice quality that we all love. Um, and phones are capable of that now. So again, if you could take a tripod, and again, not the ones that extend because those are not allowed, but just like the gorilla pod type, that would be your best 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 bet if you're looking to get better pictures. Tip number six is one again that I didn't really think of until I went to Disney World and then now Touch of Disney is you, we, we eat and walk a lot at Disneyland. I didn't realize that we did that until we could no longer eat and walk. So what I would suggest is to order your food or have one person order the food, have another person look for a cool spot to sit because what's cool about this event is you're gonna be able to eat at places that you've never been able to eat at before. So have them go search for a table while you go pick up the food and just you know enjoy being able to sit somewhere that you'll never be able to do outside this event again and it'll make for a fun experience. I would suggest don't sit in places that you're able to sit when the parks are open and just you know get a different experience. It's a lot of fun that way. Tip number seven is one that's been going on for a while is bring a straw because the straws there are terrible. These paper straws are just not good. Um, so I have a link in the description of this video, the one that we use, we have one that actually extends and it was only like five or six bucks on Amazon for a pack. And I highly recommend those because again, paper straws are nasty. I hate them. Tip number eight is something that we learned the hard way. So we had reservations at Lamplight Lounge for 6.05 PM and we had a group of seven people and we did not expect to wait as long as we did. It honestly took almost an hour from 6.05 to 7.05 to actually get seated. Um, smaller groups had no problem. I was seeing them go in and out. They were able to that, but if you have a large group, guys, expect to stay and sit and wait. And you have to stay there because they're gonna call you and if you're not there, you can't come in. So guys, again, if you have a larger group, think twice about going to Lamplight unless you really wanna do it because we were at Lamplight, in front of Lamplight at 6.05. We got done at about 8.15ish and that was it. We lost a lot of time out of our day. So if you don't wanna sit there and enjoy your food, I mean, it's an awesome experience, but again, we're on an eight hour time budget and if I would have known that, we wouldn't have done it. And my wife agrees, you know, we wouldn't have wasted as much time there. Tip number nine is actually physically write or in your notes on your phone, a to-do list. Um, we got so caught up in the moment that we messed up and we totally forgot to go down Buena Vista Street and experience all that. And that was a huge bummer for us because we live out of state and we're not able, we weren't able, I should say, to go there um, before you know this event and experience that. So we completely missed out on that. We also missed out on Coco and all of that. Um, and also what something I love to do is not only write it down because you might forget, set alarms on your phone and the alarm will go off and you'll have to turn it off and you'll see, oh, Coco. And then you'll remember, hey, let's go over there. Um, that's one of our biggest regrets is not being able to go down there as well as we didn't go down Cars Land at night and that just, that hurt me mentally and physically. So again, set alarms on your phone, physically write it down as a reminder and uh, hopefully it works out for you guys. Tip number 10 is, it's, I don't know if it's really a tip, but as pass holders, we've gotten really relaxed at the parks and we were able to stroll around and there was no like time constraint because we could always come back the, the next day. With this event, when you walk in there, if you don't walk in there with the game plan, you're kind of like, what do I do? What do I do next? Because you're on a time crunch. You're there from 12 to eight, you have eight hours and you have to get everything crammed in there. The good thing is, is that we didn't have any problems waiting in line, guys. We kept seeing all these people talk about, oh my gosh, it's such a disaster. We experienced none of that. We got there early, we knocked out the foods we wanted to. And um, after we did that, we had the whole day to just kind of 
roam around and, and just do whatever we wanted. You know what I mean? So we didn't run into that. The longest line we waited in for was probably about 10 minutes. And all the photo stuff too was extremely short, but again, I think it's because we went in there with the game plan, we executed the game plan, and we weren't just like scrambling and trying to figure things out. So again, it's a little di different feeling because you can't just chill um, like you could if you had another day after, but um, it's it was awesome. Tip number 11 is don't go searching for Touch of Disney merch because it doesn't exist. If you want it, you're gonna have to make it yourself or order it on an Etsy shop. Touch of Disney merch is something that I feel like Disney completely missed out on. Um, a huge, huge amount of people like myself would have bought it because it would have been super exclusive. So again, no Touch of Disney merch, don't search for it. Tip number 12, if you want to buy all of your food and not have to worry about it later in the day, you can actually go to the registers right outside of Grizzly Peak and um, right there, there's gonna be people that are, you're able to order your food for the entire day. You can use your $25 gift card and then you're done. You don't have to worry about anything. They're gonna give you a receipt. The only thing is if you lose the receipt, you're out. But you just use that receipt. You go to the different places. There's no time constraints. It doesn't tell you, you know, hey, you need to come between this window. You can go whenever you want, whenever you start feeling hungry and everything's paid for, everything's done. Um, the only line you will have to wait in is at the registers and then they also have, you know, a little bit of a line um, when you go to actually pick up your food depending on, you know, if a lot of people are all going at that same time. But everybody that I heard that used it said that that's amazing. We personally just mobile ordered everything and we had no issue. Again, we never had to wait longer than about 10 minutes. So it's up to you, but a lot of people are recommending using those registers and just knocking it out all at once so they don't have to even think about using the app anymore after that. Also, one thing I forgot to mention is that if you decide to use your gift cards while mobile ordering, you're gonna have to enter that 14 digit number on the back of your card each time. It does not remember your information, um, so it's kind of a pain. That's one of the main reasons why I said, hey, let's just wait to use our gift cards at Lamplight, and it backfired on me, but hey, you guys are learning from my mistakes. So the next tip is, it is what you make it if you have kids. Ellie, come here, baby. She's a very honest girl, right? Did you have fun at Disney? Yeah. It was a lot of fun, right? We were concerned that she wasn't gonna have fun because of the rides. Did you wanna go on rides? But we couldn't, but you still had a lot of fun. And so did your 10-year-old brother. And a lot of it is like, you have to, as a parent, do some homework. Like, we had fun looking for Hidden Mickeys. So before I went, I said, hey, Hidden Mickeys here, easy Hidden Mickeys, and I had the kids search for it. You know, we play little games together, and that's honestly is a difference maker, because with kids, you can have fun anywhere. And you're at Disney, there's so much stuff to see. So if you're not having fun there with your kids, that is your fault. You know, buy a bubble wand. You know, they're a little expensive. Use your AP discount, but it's worth it. The kids have so much fun with that, you know what I mean? So it is what you make it. Do your homework as a parent before you go and everyone will have fun. Hope you guys learned from my mistakes. If you did, give us a thumbs up as well as let us know how your Touch of Disney experience went and how this helped you. As well as subscribe because we have so many fun adventures to share with you guys as well as tips and tricks when going to the parks. We'll see you guys in the next video. Have a great day.